Hey dudes and dudettes, although I suspect it's mostly dudettes. Today we're gonna make a rosy wrap, or a rockabilly headband, or a tie-on hairband, whatever you want to call it. You can choose almost any woven fabric for your wrap. If you choose a really lightweight fabric, you'll want to use a fusible interfacing to bulk it up a little bit. You could also use a knit fabric, but again you'll want to use interfacing to keep it from stretching. I found that 38 inches is a pretty good length for the finished hairband. I like to use quarter inch seam allowances on small projects like this because then I don't have to trim the seam allowance. So I'm gonna go with a quarter inch seam allowance, which will give us a total length of 38.5 inches. The width on the other hand is fairly flexible. In our sample photo, the one on the left is about two inches wide and the one on the right is about three and a half inches wide. You can really go anywhere in between those and really you could probably try going a little skinnier or a little fatter. The important thing is that you remember to add seam allowances. And again, I'm going with a quarter inch on either side. You can go larger than that if you'd like. So you want to go ahead and cut out two of your appropriately sized rectangles out of your main fabric. And if you're using interfacing, two of those as well. If you have a rotary cutter, it makes long straight cuts like this really easy. If you're not using interfacing, you can skip ahead. If you are using interfacing at this point, you want to fuse the interfacing to the back of your fabric strips. So here are the two pieces of our head wrap. We're going to line up all of the raw edges like so. Then I want to mark the center of the short edge and about five inches from that edge on each side. What we want here is about five inches from that edge. We want it to gently taper to a point. So you can go ahead and cut like so. If you want to mark it up more ahead of time before you cut, you can do that. So now I've got our two band pieces unfolded again and I want to place them right sides together and then pin. So here's a look at those two pieces pinned together all the way around. Now I'm going to fold mine in half and mark the center. And that's just actually a little reminder because when you start stitching, which we're going to do right now, you want to leave about a two or maybe three inch gap between where your stitching starts and where your stitching stops. So that pin will serve as a reminder so you don't just sew the whole thing shut. When you get to one of the end points, I like to go really slow and advance the stitching by hand using the hand wheel. So here's our stitch band, and like I said, right here you can see that two inch gap that I left open. If you have larger seam allowances, you want to go ahead and trim those now. All I have to do is trim these corners. I think it's easiest to start at one end, get that end started inside out, insert your chopstick or skewer, whatever you're using, and then just work it slowly until you get to that gap in your stitching. Once you get there, you're gold. You just pull the rest through and then repeat for the other end. Once you get the whole thing turned right side out, you want to focus on those points. So slide your chopstick or whatever you're using back in and just kind of jab at that point a little bit and get it nice and crisp. After that, it's time to press. When you're finished pressing, it's time to top stitch. And you can pick a top stitch color that blends with your fabric or you can pick a contrasting color, it's up to you. And here's our finished wrap, all stitched up. All that's left to do now is to tie it on. That's it, dudes and dudettes. For more tips, tricks, and kick-ass patterns, visit whatthecraft.com.